Oh, I think that's actually one of the two questions that I haven't done before. So, you know, in the past, I didn't do this question um, saying, oh, this is so easy. I don't have to do it. Uh, at this point, I mean, <laughs> sorry, I don't mean to be so flippant. Um, but since it's one of the few questions I haven't done, let me do it. And actually, while I'm doing this, let me show you some uh, considerations that go into when the system automatically grades this. So it asks, roughly how many heartbeats are there in a lifetime? You may use E notation to enter your answer in scientific notation. Oh, okay. And the hint actually gives you, like, a, it guides you to the section of the textbook which will um, tell you. In fact, if you go to figure 1.4, um, what they ask you, number of heartbeats in a human lifetime, I think that's one of the uh, things in this figure. So times in seconds, let's see. One second, time for one heartbeat, human lifetime. Ah, so if a billion seconds is about human lifetime and one second is time for one human heartbeat, then, you know, human lifetime, there must be a billion heartbeats. So I can answer that. Now, for those of you who have done this already, you might think um, that's one billion, right? Um, you might think uh, that's a way off because uh, I think when you go through a more careful estimate, in fact, I think ChatGPT answered one of these in your use of generative AI uh, thing. Uh, it's actually closer to something like, um, it's closer to something like a pi times 10 to the power of 9 heartbeats. And yeah, that also gets graded as correct. Um, so this is meant to be a, a very, a, what's called a Fermi estimate question, order of magnitude estimate question. So the question has been uh, programmed with a rather generous uh, tolerance. So I don't know if it will accept 10 to the 8, um, so you know, 0.1 billion or 100 million heartbeats. Yeah, yeah, at some point it's too far off for it to accept as being correct. But um, because the nature of what this question is, it'll accept, a, okay, that's a little too far. Uh, it'll accept a wide range of things as being correct. So um, I think a five, oh, five billion that doesn't accept? Hmm. Seems a little bit ungenerous. I think a four uh, billion heartbeats, that's probably someone who lives to be 100 years old. Let me just give that a little try with... Uh, Sorry, I shouldn't have done what I just did. <laughs> so 100 years, years um, divided by, um, so one heartbeat, I think I'm still using one second. Uh, yeah. So, so, you know, someone who lives to be 100 years, whose heart beats pretty fast. Uh, like, um, I don't know. So, no. No. Yeah. <laughs> um, um, so, anyways, um, so, uh, so if uh, in situations where it might seem like a question is really vague, give it a try. Um, usually, if uh, as we are pro as we were programming the questions, if we knew it was a kind of a question that'll give a large range of answers, usually we will program in a, a tolerance that um, that respects that that um, is aware of the fact that um, a lot of different answers sh should be graded as correct, some range of them. Okay, may maybe that's the range. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay, so uh, let me see if I can get one of the other questions um, by using get a similar question. It's one of the new questions that actually uh, can be fairly difficult. Okay, it's gonna take me forever to get it this way, so let me leave a student view and I can just uh, use the normal way of um, pulling out the exact questions I need. Okay, so this question says the magnitudes of two displacement vectors are, uh, they're just giving the magnitude 18 meters and 6 meters. What are the largest and the smallest values of the magnitude of the resultant? Yeah, I think the hint will basically give away the answer. Yeah, how should they be oriented to produce the smallest resultant, largest resultant, well, um, if you got these two vectors, you know, A of some length and B of some other length, the largest um, or the smallest length will come from when they oppose each other. So for the smallest, it'll look like A going that way 
and B going straight backward. And you know, depending on which vector is larger, uh, it might actually going, be going in the direction of B, not direction of A. Here, A happens to be longer. So the resultant, A plus B, adding it using the head to tail method, um, this is the length. So in terms of calculation, it's going to be 18 minus 6, 12 meters. Very simple. So that's the smallest. For the largest magnitude, you will want them adding in the same direction. You want them pulling in the same direction. So A plus B. And I, I don't think this is a difficult question, and I, I don't think a lot of people struggle. But, you know, somehow, sometimes, so I've taught conceptual physics classes before. Um, sometimes when people are dealing with the vectors new, um, these things can be confusing, uh, can be uh, challenging. And number one advice I have is try drawing the picture. Because things that are not obvious when you're just trying to think about them in your head, they become clearer when you are just sketching it when you are seeing them visually. So 18 plus 6, 24. So, so that's it. Um, that's uh, this one last question that I haven't done before. So with that, I've done all the problems at one questions.